Hello. National underclassman calm down. And you see. Here we go. And soldiers to put a helmet Welcome to this week's Shu and Magoo Show with Ace Ventura, Matt Yanowski. And with the best customer in the fast food industry, David Schumann. <laughs> Let's get right to it once again. Great intro. Uh, Matt, you got the lead. Here we go. Who is the best quarterback in the NFL this year? There's been a lot of things going on. Some teams much better than they were expected to be. Uh, some other teams not where they were supposed to be. There's some good arguments, but after some serious thought about it, when you factor success as well as how a quarterback this year, maybe more than others, has made specific players better, I'm going to go Matt Ryan, the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, he's Matt Ryan? Matt Ryan, for this season alone. Now, the Atlanta Falcons are 8-2. and two. Roddy White is having a breakout season. Get your air pumped out. You're full of hot air. Let's go. Fill it up. Fill uh, it up. Matt Ryan. <laughs> Matt Ryan? Matt Ryan? Matt Ryan? Matt Ryan? Matt Ryan? Matt Ryan's got to be the this year. Okay. Listen, I'm going ha to have to staple your mouth shut. you got to let me speak. <laughs> now, Matt Ryan is about 20-1 at home, and he's undefeated at home this year. The Atlanta Falcons are having their best season since they made the Super Bowl. He's made tremendous progress. You know, he's a terrific quarterback, and as I said, Roddy White is now considered arguably the best wide receiver in the game this year alone. Why? Matt Ryan. <sighs> All right. Well, I have a top six. Uh, Matt Ryan's not even in that top six, though he is an excellent quarterback. Don't get me wrong. Number one, Drew Brees. Most people would agree he's the best all-around quarterback in the NFL. Why? He makes things happen. He has great movement in the pocket, great delivery. Number two, Peyton Manning, smartest quarterback in the NFL. He plays with no receivers. He has guys like uh, that are catching the ball that are a fifth, sixth receiver score and two touchdowns, like this past weekend, White. Uh, the receiver White caught. Austin Clinton. Collie's one of the best up and coming receivers. Oh, Reggie, Wayne, Reggie Wayne's a Pro Bowler. Reggie Wayne's Dallas like 50. He's, he's, he's 50. still a good player. He's, he's got, a he's great got receivers. Oh, he's God. got receivers who were good receivers. Hey, go back to Matt Ryan. Three, Tom Brady. Tom Brady, Mr. Cool himself. Great long hair. Dates the hottest girl in the NFL. Something you'll never do. Hand, hands down. Hands down. I mean, yes, okay. Well, I will date Giselle Bunchin. Okay. But she wouldn't date you. That's I know, but you're dating a gorilla. Okay, here we go. You don't date Mar anybody. Mar Mark Sanchez. We go with Mark Sanchez. He's available, ladies. <laughs> Mark Sanchez, Mr. Clutch. He's our number four. Hands down. Hands down. Mark Sanchez in the last few weeks well, with Santonio Holmes has, has done a tremendous job. Yep. Okay, we'll go to our next topic. That was actually really good and actually hilarious, Matt. You were funny as usual. And you're always easy to joke on. <laughs> Should the high school football have a national championship? I'll start off with this. I think you know what my answer is going to be. Yes. How well? You, how do you do it? Um, is the question. I think you make an 18 bracket. You take uh, you take them on a plus three game system. Uh, you shorten you shorten maybe their game weeks at the beginning of the year or take one game off, especially for some of these elite squads. You have an 18 championship. I mean, if I were go go with who I would like to see it in. Obviously, we're in New Jersey. Don Bosco Prep is obviously spectacular. Euless Trinity out in Texas. South Panola in Mississippi, which has been uh, number one uh, on and off for most of the year. Phoebus. Phoebus. And, yeah, Phoebus Virginia. is unbelievable in Virginia. St. Thomas Aquinas. Bingham in Utah. De La Salle out in California. And Manatee down in Florida. Uh, I mean, just think about that as a bracket of teams playing for the national championship. I don't know if it, if it would work out from a financial standpoint. I love the concept. You know, you also have to factor how everything's going to have to be funded. That's 60 kids you have to get out there. That's 60 meals a day. You know, but just the sponsors don't fund that. You don't think sponsors... It's, you know, it's, it's easier, how, how it's about easier the success of Coach G. Varsity? I mean, it, very successful. Just really kind of launched in the last two years. But this year, content's been amazing on it. I mean, you know, in, in the tri-state area, you got all, all kinds of great games. Football, yes. I mean, people were fans of other sports as well. You, you got it. And it's, you can't tell me they're not making money. It, from it, it's apples and oranges. You know, with, with all due respect to MG, MSG Varsity, which I really like, it's very hard to compare having a couple camera guys go and film a high school game and having a team of 60 players fly out to somewhere in the country, you know, and expect them to fill up a stadium. Now, you've seen some games mm. with local teams that don't sell up. You know, don't fill up a stadium. Now, let's say you were to have the top two teams in the country play a game somewhere in the Midwest, and let's say you had Bosco against a team from California. What's going to make these people in, you know, it's whatever right state it may be? You know, but what's going to make people go to the go to the game and fill up the seats? I, I think. Well, first of all, I think that you'll have almost like a bowl-like situation where the people that are fans of those schools 
they're going to come out and, and, and want to support their team and they're going to they're going if, to if they're from a, a local town or something like that they're going to fly out and drive out people get on the bus and take 10,000 people with them um, I also think that from a, from a television standpoint you know you have great people covering it alright that's a wrap I'll give you the game ball for that give you the game ball Matt first game ball for you first game ball for me I always win <laughs> alright put that away here we go our next topic <laughs> our next topic our Heisman watch or Heisman watch, and, and I'll leave with this. And I think I think we disagree highly on the Heisman uh, watch and who our top five is, which is why I didn't want to peek at anything that you had before we got on the, on the show here today. But for me, I'll start off with what, who I have in my top five. You know who I have is number one, Killer Cam Newton. He's 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 the best uh, football player in America. Um, there's a whole bunch of things obviously surrounding him with his recruitment, but as far as who has been getting it done and leading his team and making the biggest impact, Cam Newton hands down, uh, I have as my number one. Uh, my number two I have is Andrew Luck. Without him at Stanford, uh, Stanford would not be the team that they are. He works perfectly well in, in, in Harbaugh's system. That's my top five. I'd love to hear yours. It's real, real close to the top. You've got two quarterbacks. One who can fly and one who's very grounded. First guy, obviously, is Cameron Newton, who has 21 passing touchdowns can, and 17 rushing touchdowns. Can you bring up that, that prop back? So I just, everybody, Why, so you can eat it? I just want to know what it is. <laughs> okay. Cameron, Cameron Newton is having a phenomenal season. With that said, and him being <coughs> a, a likely candidate, all the press you know, about the recruiting violations with him is going to hurt him, especially Reggie Bush just lost the award. You don't think some of these guys are thinking in the back hmm. of their mind? A lot of these voters can really be influenced by certain things. But Kellen Moore, Ooh. of Boise State, that's your guy. Eleven and zero. He's thrown for over twenty nine hundred yards. He's completed seventy two percent of his passes. He's only been picked off five times, and he has a quarterback rating of almost one hundred and ninety. Uh, writing down the rest of them, uh, Michael James, another very good candidate. Oregon's having a the great season, and hopefully, as I said a couple weeks ago, they don't lose a big game, which they always right. seem to do. Andy Dalton, TCU, similar situation to Moore. Phenomenal season. 21-26 for 355 yards in his biggest game. Moving down, you got Justin Blackman, uh, and Andrew Luck, and then, also, of course, a little bit of wild card who's not going to win it, Denard Robinson. Right. 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 I feel like, I feel like um, our producer, Ken, is, is yeah. not going to adore it and, like, Someone's here with a delivery for Ken, me. Ken is working off of the time as money theory. He's looking to get out of here. <laughs> let's let's go right to uh, what we're thankful for. I, I I got a bunch of things that I'm thankful for. We'll go back and forth. Okay. And then and we'll, then we have we'll our, we'll our new segment. Then we have our new segment, which will be uh, our highly anticipated new segment. Okay. All right. Let's start off. Okay. Number one, most thankful thing I'm for is your haircut. Excellent. The haircut, the Ace Ventura cut, fantastic. I can't get my hair to do the things that yours does. I'm looking <laughs> forward and I'm very thankful for this Thanksgiving for your Ace Ventura I'm, haircut. I'm, I'm thankful that I'm in much better shape than Dave. I'm thankful that I'm naturally better looking. I'm also thankful that our producers had moved the chairs a couple inches because if Dave was any closer to me, I might not have any room to move at all. Okay, so on a serious tip, that was three thanks. Yeah. The, my, my next thank thing is I got luck, I was lucky enough to see the Old Japan versus Paramus High School semifinals in the state championship game. Best football game I have ever seen at the high school level. 63-56, dominated by two quarterbacks, Devin Fuller, who rushed for over 400 yards for Old Japan High School, still undefeated. They'll meet Wayne Hills over there in New Jersey. Every Sunday between September and December... <laughs> Why? Because I don't have to leave my house. I could sit up, wake up 12.30, flip on the TV, watch a pregame show, flip around a little bit, and I'm basically covered throughout the day with football. So ESPN, ABC, NBC, Fox, thank you. Uh, next thing I'm thankful for, uh, obviously on a serious tip, all the great athletes we get to work with over at the National Interclassman Combines, um, all the families that we get to work with uh, that they, they allow us to come uh, into their cities and work with their sons and, and be a part of our program. Um, you know, I'm very thankful for that. Our new segment, which is our wild card segment. We know everyone who, who might know Ken, those of you who don't know him, obviously because he's behind the scenes, Ken can be a wild man. So we made up the segment for our producer, Ken, the wild card segment. Here we go, Ken. Okay, well, this past Sunday, uh, we saw Seymour knock out Ben Roethlisberger. If you wanted to, if you could knock out one football star or football coach, who would you knock out? Ooh, ooh. Oh, I'll let yeah. you, I'll let you uh, t take that route. Could I go 1, 1A, one 1B, one 1C, one or it has to be one single individual? Whatever you want. You okay. have three minutes. I'll, I'll run it down quickly. First guy, Brett Favre. He's a, he's a drama king. 
he overhypes himself, he gets everyone talking about him, and, and it's ridiculous. You know, I feel like he tries to make himself bigger than the game. He's an all-time great quarterback. Enough is enough already. Number two, Terrell Owens. <sighs> well, we come to me. First of all, as a coach, as a former player, um, I wouldn't want anyone coming up and knocking me out. So <laughs> I'd like to refrain from using that term. <laughs> maybe maybe I use take it a room and scold them severely. <laughs> or stealing food from their kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> or one of those two would work for me. Um, I actually, it's one of those things where I saw Ben Roethlisberger get knocked out, and I thought to myself, Every female throughout the United States who knew that story, yes, what he did was wrong, but every female cheered. Every female cheered, especially the ones down at the University of Georgia that live in Athens where he was down there creating all kinds of havoc. Um, every female cheered. So I will stick with, if I could grab in a room and scold and maybe just grab them by their collar with Ben Roethlisberger, I, I have to say it was almost like sweet justice and then any of you ever played uh, Punch Out from Nintendo way back in the class, <laughs> Joe? <laughs> I think we'll end the segment on there. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Hopefully, you will join us again next week on the Shoe and Magoo Show starring Ace Ventura. And the big man who's going to eat enough turkey for his whole family. <laughs> Enjoy your Thanksgiving. Happy Turkey Day.